Hello. We can get started. Uh, my name is Joel. I work at uh, Google uh, in the Chrome OS group on performance, power, scheduling, RCU, stuff like that. Um, and uh, you guys want to introduce yourself? Yeah, quickly. Yeah, my name is Ulis Laurius. I'm working in Sony Mobile, doing the same kernel, uh, performance, power, thermal, so things like that. Hi, my name is Rishikesh Kadam. I work for Intel. Uh, I've been working on firmware previously in uh, SOC power management firmware and so on, and most recently working on power and performance uh, optimization for Chrome and Linux devices. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this talk is about RCU and, uh, you know, uh, some uh, room for improving systems, the way they use RCU. Uh, we can keep this like, uh, like uh, discussion and interactive uh, sort of thing. Uh, obviously, we won't go too much into how RCU works, uh, and hopefully, everybody uh, knows that part. So, the the two issues that uh, we have been working on uh, is uh, you know how to improve the uh, power uh, the uh, power uh, power efficiency in the system uh, that is more mostly idle and um, how uh, some amount of RCU activity can uh, uh, distur disturb it. Just to be clear, that's not RCU's fault. That's uh, whatever is making RCU do work. Paul uh, uh, wanted us to mention. <laughs> <laughs> um, so RCU is, uh, you know, the, the most popular use case is, uh, you know, uh, the concurrent read and write of data structures, which is possible because copy of the object being written to is created, and you know, then you swap pointers and wait until all readers have uh, exited before you can do a garbage collection. However, the uh, that's that's just one use case, uh, and there are many uses of RCU, um, but all of them have the same uh, need the same basic tools, which is you need to know when a critical section uh, starts and stops locklessly. And you need to know when to start waiting, and you need to know when to stop waiting, which is when all the readers that existed when you started waiting have exited. And this can be accomplished with uh, callbacks. Uh, so you queue a callback when you start waiting, and RCU will check all the CPUs, um, make sure there are no readers left, and invoke the callbacks. Uh, so the timer takes plays an important role on CPUs uh, on, on certain RC configurations, which don't use no CB config RC no CB. Um, uh, so the timer tech has to do uh, some amount of work, check if there are any readers on the CPU uh, on the on the current CPU where callback is queued, and also it has to check uh, whether all CPUs have checked that they don't have any readers as well. Only then can callbacks be executed. Uh, and this also, uh, you know, some of this doesn't have to happen in idle. However, if you queue callbacks on the local CPU, uh, you still need the tick to be active so that it can, uh, uh, you know, it can check if all other, all CPUs have reported that there are no more readers anymore. So you still need the tick. So this is the observation that because callbacks were queued, uh, you know, the tick cannot be turned off because you have to keep checking if uh, all these other CPUs are done, right? Uh, so turning off, uh, uh, turning on, uh, well, okay, we'll get to that. You can just talk about trace, a social trace with this issue, right? Right. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, an issue I observed earlier this year. So the snapshot on the right-hand side is the kernel from kernel shark during uh, local video playback. And the vertical blue boxes is where are the frame boundaries uh, for the video playback. And that is where the inside those blue boxes is where the uh, audio video decoding is happening. And then between the blue boxes is the idle period is where the CPU should uh, go to low power state. But then the red boxes is the issue here. So we, what we observed is there were instances where, where the kernel stick was kept on by RCU. And uh, so that was a problem. It was uh, causing a large number of fakes and preventing the uh, SOC from going into low power mode. And uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much. I think next uh, you will talk about 
why it was keeping the stick on and so on, right? Yeah. So as you can see in the trace, uh, he just showed also that the tick is kept on uh, when CPUs are idle. And so why does RCU do that? Um, or why would people have RCU configurations that do that, right? If it's so harmful to uh, to uh, to power and stuff like that. Uh, and the reason is because it can it can be useful for uh, you know large servers and busy systems that uh, which uh, queue and uh, dequeue a lot of callbacks and invoke a lot of RC callbacks uh, because you get the benefit of the uh, cache being hot, right? Because everything happens on the same CPU. You also have the benefit of not having to queue a callback on one CPU and then wake up another thread on another CPU. Um, miss any other advantages? Um, yeah, and, and there's no lock contention as well. So because, uh, you know, uh, everything's happening on the same CPU, the callbacks are executed in soft IRQ, so you don't need to hold a, uh, uh, the list lock to a DQ callback from the, from the list and, uh, and execute it. So there are advantages. However, uh, for uh, power systems that care a lot about power, like battery powered systems, and all keeping like the take on during you know when the CPU is idle and not doing any work is is like unacceptable. And in this slide, you can see that just turning on config RCU no CV uh, increases like it gives like a twelve percent power improvement with uh, video playback. Uh, use case, um, and the uh, basically uh, this was observed on an Intel platform, where the deepest package C state um, has like 20, uh, 25 percent more, uh, you know, a residency, giving that 12, 12 percent uh, percent improvement in power. So uh, yeah, so I, I wrote a tool called RCU Top uh, to observe. The, so this is this, this here's another observation. Um, even after turning on config RC no CV, another observation we see is that callbacks are still constantly queued on a system that is like almost idle uh, because various things in the kernel are like you know constantly queuing uh, callbacks and RCU is then like trying to start and end grace periods and things like that. So RCU top is like a, a BPF tool I wrote, uh, which we hope to uh, merge in, uh, into the kernel sources as well, which will show you, uh, you know, at a high level, what are all the callbacks on the system that are doing this? So this has been really useful. In this slide, I show, uh, uh, there's a trace that uh, Rishikesh uh, collected where we see that with the uh, Chrome OS display pipeline, we see that every 16 milliseconds, uh, we see RCU callbacks being queued. And this is because the graphics buffers are uh, represented as file descriptors and they're like open and closed every frame. Yeah. yeah. Question? Um, yeah, I was uh, extra curious about the tool uh, yeah. since you showed me yesterday. I was thinking, I was wondering if there is also a per CPU view of the where the the yeah. those sort of things are queued. Because, for example, for yeah, the there is not right now, but I think that could that be, would be nice, right? We should yeah. do that. Yeah, because uh, especially for the isolation, when we want to check that uh, the isolated CPUs are not. Yeah, that's service. a good point. Yeah. Okay. We could, we should do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just out of curiosity, is it based on, on uh, RCU traces? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the okay. invoke callback and the RCU callback traces, trace, okay. trace points. That's why I moved it before the bypass list queue happens because it wasn't even being called, and that's in my path set. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that could be a good candidate in, in the tools. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah I, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does synchronize RCU, uh, like a synchronous call, look like in RCU top? Does it get labeled as such? And yeah, it, you, who the caller of it is? Yeah, it shows something like uh, Paul should know the exact function, but it was wait RCU or FN or something like that. So okay. it's internally implemented with call RCU. Right. I'm wondering, 
do you label where synchronized RCU was called from so that you know where that call is? Yeah, the trace point doesn't have that info, but yeah, the, in those cases, yes, we don't know where the okay. you know where it was called from. Maybe yeah, well, maybe we can use some BPF magic or something to Possibly, figure out. Yeah. At least F trace can dump the stack, so maybe we can get that from the tool or something. Hey, if I understand the, uh, the question correctly, I guess we can make use of uh, built-in address, address 0, 1, 2, 3 to understand the caller. And probably we can extend our tracers, uh, RCU-specific tracers, with such information. It yeah. would be, by the way, good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you want to quickly talk about Android logging and how you saw it? Yeah, maybe I will talk briefly, but I will skip this because we don't have so much time. Uh, yeah, about Android. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 about to talk about Android, and uh, we see that uh, especially in idle use cases for Android uh, specific use cases, we see that RCU might be quite active, even though the system is idle, and uh, this is not good from better point of view. Uh, and for example, on this uh, F trace, you can see that. In idle, in idle use case, uh, most of the wake up belong to uh, RCU subsystem. And if we, I will also skip this one, and and I will, yeah, it will be much more easier to understand. And this is uh, idle use case. It's a static image use case, and uh, you see the traces. And this is RCU batch start traces, and you see that. Uh, four CPUs, so we have a big and little cluster. We have eight CPUs, and uh, first four CPUs, they are quite busy with uh, with such activity, RCU activity, to invoking and uh, to invoking for invoking callbacks. And the problems with this or drawback is that we invoke only few callbacks, and actually it's a kind of wasteful. So uh, yeah, it's a kind of wasteful. Uh, the real question is why is Oh, it's it's actually you know it's a bad world. So. <laughs> Sorry? Ah, okay, yeah. It's um, it depends on app. It depends on everything. But there are bad apps, and you can do nothing with that. But in our particular test case, I show uh, that login can destroy uh, idle use cases. And for example. A login uh, make use of a lot of opening, closing files, and we see that uh, functions like file free RCU, I not free, by RCU, I call back D free, IVC not I free, uh, uh, AVC not free, as they actually mm -hmm. apply such lot on RCU yeah. subsystem. Uh, where is it? Thomas, uh, I was asking um, about one thing I, I just also want to say is the um, like, why you, the question was, why would we want RCU on an idle? CPU. I think part of it is the fact that this is, you know, generic um, uh, systems. Like it's a Chromebook. Like us, I care about Chromebooks. I'm on the Chromebook team, and we have multiple CPUs. And there's a lot of cases where things just go idle. So it's not like it's just that you have cases where something kicks off, something goes idle for a while, then kicks it off and goes idle, like the video playback. And because it's just the general way RCU works, it's not like we don't have anything des like designated as this is like you know, idle. And we should move the call box someplace else um it's just more like that we're wasting electricity because we just happen to pick the idle processor i think i mentioned this is one of those things i threw up that crazy idea on irc like hey can we when we in the scheduler can we just move things off of I, like if something's going idle and is there a way that we can move k threads or whatever off onto other cpus that are busy and keep the idle cpus idle just generic method so it just means that the normal system is when things go idle, we just happen to be filling things up and we're not letting those idle CPUs go idle to save energy. So in something like a Chromebook where laptop battery matters, it would be better to move those things off to something that's already busy than to keep and let the CPUs save electricity. Steve, does that make sense? It's worse than that. So it's worse than that. Yeah, so that's good. But what he just showed a picture of and what Rishikesh showed a picture of is the entire system has to go idle 
to get into a, a really deep power saving okay. state. So you really have to score a, a hundred on this one. So it's, just, yeah, that, so, that work, you really want to eliminate it rather than move it. So actually, so I guess the point I guess we're saying is if the system is idle, do we really need to garbage collect? Bingo. So, so guess, the, yeah. the yeah, that's I was getting to that. So garbage yes. collect is not the only thing, right? Uh, but well, well why do we RCU need the RCU callbacks yeah. to execute? Yeah, I mean, that's, if, uh, if there's nothing, if it's as long as there's nothing that's blocked. Yeah, if everything's in the sleeping state, not the task interruptible yeah. state. Yeah. So yeah. The, yeah. So uh, so I'll jump to the okay. solution I, after trying out everything possible to, uh, uh, you know, improve the situation. We believe that uh, the way forward and, uh, you know, we can uh, discuss that as well, is to selectively identify which callbacks are, which callbacks, the, the, you know, in our observation, there are not a lot of callbacks that are constantly uh, being queued. They're, the, they're in, the, in, the v, in the VFS, mostly uh, there's some, uh, task struct stuff, uh, you know, so, some callbacks in SQ Linux. Um, so, uh, but, you know, uh, the easiest and the lowest risk way is to introduce a new API that uh, uh, that will make, uh, 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 you know, that we call lazy RCU or lazy RCU callbacks, where we queue these callbacks, but we don't let RCU know at all that they exist. And we uh, set up a timer. Uh, and of course, we are very uh, careful that memory pressure uh, conditions uh, don't uh, get worse or, or we out of memory. So we have shrinker to make sure that those callbacks are not a secret anymore once, uh, you know, uh, when, when memory, memory is uh, scarce. Um, so, uh, the, you know, the uh, RCU top also confirms that when you switch to such an API, uh, you know, callbacks are not executed, they're just being queued. Uh, and we see that uh, there is power, there's, there's very good power improvement. So on top of RCU no CB, we see another 4% power improvement when using, uh, you know, call RCU lazy. Now, I just want to mention that another option could have been we just slow down the entire RCU. But uh, I think as Steven mentioned, you have the memory reclamation use case, but you have several use cases that don't uh, do memory reclamation, like switching off uh, per CPU ref count from the per CPU mode to atomic mode. These things are not, uh, they, they use RCU, but uh, they're not memory, memory reclaim related. So we cannot just slow down the whole of RCU. So selectively identifying these cases that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, don't need their callbacks executed right away, uh, is, is one way to do this. Now the risk of, the drawback of this is, if, you, if, if somebody writes a new uh, RCU callback use case that doesn't use RCU lazy, then again, we're back to where we started. Uh, that, that's why uh, I have a point on uh, documentation. Um. Also, uh, whenever Thomas talks, you should repeat, because I think there are people here that are, or maybe send that off to Thomas <laughs> so that uh, the remote people could hear your comments. Yeah. Um, unless you want to make it private for the room. Um, what, but the thing is, um, what if we just did the other way around and make all lazy and just have an RC, call RCU expedite or something? Yeah, and that, that still causes regressions because there are things that have like a synchronous use case, but they don't use synchronous RCU. They use call RCU, uh, and and they still do some waiting. So we well, we, we, we tried that. Those and, we fixed them. <laughs> yeah, that that might be one way. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, do it yeah. the way like you said. Have it expedite, and when you find a regression, it's a simple fix. You add the expedite in that location. Yeah, but let me also uh, to be more specific because the problem here is not. Uh, it's also just keep in mind that uh, uh, on our use cases we see that we can invoke we invoke only one callback, and uh, invoking only one callback um, implies waking up grace period uh, thread and then OCBK thread, and it really doesn't ma it doesn't make sense. 
I mean, to uh, to kick RCU for, for only invoking one callback. And this is the main point. So the main, uh, we, what shall we do instead? We should combine batch request and then uh, process them. And what we see right now is that uh, it's really, uh, you can run, run into this situ situations when we you invoke only one, two callbacks, and this is not okay. Well, I mean, could you put how, how would you that? fix the how would you fix the call RCU users who are synchronously doing something uh, and using call RCU uh, waiting for that callback to execute? It, it has to be a new API, right? Because expedited will not speed those guys up. Well, I'm, so I say RCU expedited. I mean, well. I mean, uh, there is an expedite. I'm not saying yeah. just add a new, but it's the term expedite. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't speed up call RCU. It only speeds up synchronized RCU. Yeah. Um, so, well, so I'm saying, could you have like a call? So add RCU, a new API. Can basically. you have like a call RCU expedite? Okay, yeah, that, yeah. that's what I'm saying. So, you, okay. you, where you, when you do call RCU, like a lot of times I use call RCU, say, okay, I'm done with this, let it free. I don't care when it's called, just that it gets freed at some time. Okay. So, but if there's something that I, I do a call RCU where I'm actually waiting for it, that would be a call RCU ex expedite. Say, I'm waiting for this. Paul, uh, Paul has a, uh, yeah. Yeah, throw the, uh, I can take mine. <laughs> <laughs> something Vlad has been working. <laughs> no, just kidding. He, uh, uh, Paul just said, wait, what was the question? What did you say, Paul? Uh, Here. Okay. Right here. <laughs> What's this call RCU expedited? It's new and on me. <laughs> and what's expedited about it? So, yeah, so uh, I guess the suggestion is that to use Diffie still first FQS to slow down the whole of RCU, except for those call RCU users, like the, the users that need, uh, uh, need to execute their callbacks fast, use call RCU expedited. And so that way, everything uh, is delayed and batched, and that gets you the benefits you're looking but, for, right? But which ones are actually asking for for uh, being executed fast? So uh, there's at least one use case uh, I found. Uh, there should be others because we see regressions all over the place. But the one I found is this one, where uh, all, uh, sorry, uh, per CPU ref counts ref counters uses call RCU to do the switch between uh, ref mode and atomic mode or something like that. And that is used in the suspend, pa uh, suspend path called from block pre runtime suspend. So, you so, know, I was hoping I didn't find it, but I, but I did. So, so it's very interesting. Yeah, but that looks broken. So, yeah, I know. So don't, so, so really, uh, and I can tell you that from doing 20 years of this. Uh, if you see something like this, analyze it and fix it. This is broken. Uh, do not try to work around it. You're not making anything better. You make things worse. So I guess the question is, um, is there any really use case for this call RCU? Basically, is there anything that legitimately calls RCU and is waiting for that to finish? I mean, if, if something waits for, for RCU to call back, it queued to complete, it has to do synchronized RCU. Yes, yes. So, it I mean, do its RCU own. Barrier. RCU barrier. Or RCU barrier or whatever. Uh, the point is, if there's some use case uh, implicitly assuming that something is happening magically before it can proceed, this is broken and we have to fix it. No point in trying to, to work around it. You, you're not making anything better. Are we having three different, so we're having three different RCUs, call RCU lazy, call RCU, and call RCU expedited. Um, because that's going to be, uh, either way, we're going to have fun uh, telling people which is which. But uh, no, no, the idea was the idea was to have an RCU call RCU lazy and have the uh, normal call RCU be expedited. So it's, we need a lazy and an expedited. That's all we need. We just need the two, I would say. that We're just, but no, now you're saying that. Well, there's no reason we should have it just because if you need it, that means you need synchronized or RCU barrier. Right. Right. And if, if some calls, some usage site is missing that, then it's broken today. So, uh, so th these patches delay the entire RC processing by like several seconds, like up to 10 seconds. Uh, but if we were to do something like call our, uh, you know, fix these bugs and then use 
Jiffy is still first FQS. So the point is we want to delay RC processing no matter what, whether we fix this or not, right? So uh, if we fix these issues and then we use Jiffy is still first FQS to see the same improvement, because we do see power improvement not having to call RCU at all for like, or you know in, invoke the grace period processing at all for several seconds right yeah you do you do you do better batching <laughs> no i mean but that's what 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 happens you queue the callbacks and you don't process them for a couple of seconds and then you batch you batch process them in one go right because at some point you have to process them so we batch process everything is what you're saying so if you delay the the, the callback execution uh, for a random amount of time then once you go to to it all the grace periods have uh, have been uh, done and you do uh, you batch process uh, all the pending callbacks in one go right and that's where your power saving comes from. You no, know, the power saving comes from not even starting grace period processing at all. So there's, it's completely quiet. Yeah, power save comes one uh, when when you actually stop uh, making make the noise. Uh, by noise, I mean that we invoke only one callback, and this is the biggest problem. And you invoke it with, a, for example, one two millisecond interval. It doesn't make sense. And due to such noise, as I showed you on a plot. Yeah, but. You're describing the symptom. Yes, it's a symptom, yes. So, so let's talk about the underlying thing. I mean, if you you have the, the, the callbacks queued by something, VFS or whatever it is, and it, then if you just delay grace period processing for a certain amount of time, you can go deeper in idle uh, and then at some point, you have to do uh, to to uh, end all the grace periods anyway. So, because you cannot queue up callbacks forever, that doesn't work. I mean, you can queue them up and say, "Okay, if I have hundred, I go and process hundred." But you can't queue them out uh, forever. Yeah, memory you, pressures also. Yeah, yeah, you're going to 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 die hard at some point. So I think what, what you should aim for is um, delaying the, the uh, dynamically uh, delaying the, the, the callback processing so you get better batching. Because if you if you are awake and doing doing hundred in a in one go, it makes sense. But this also gives you a handle on busy systems. Because if you see your your queuing uh, uh, frequency is high enough, you're not going to delay because you 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 risk starvation. Because if your batches get too large, yeah, then you occupy too much of the system. So you can scale that with the frequency of callbacks being queued. And if you have a synchronized RCU call, you have to do it anyway. Okay. So you're saying that there's no point in dealing it by 10 seconds, just make it smaller? Uh, and... You can You can even, I mean, this really depends on the system state. If your thing queues five in a minute, then go for 10 minutes. So, but at some point you have, uh, you have to decide to actually execute them because you can't queue them up forever. So, but it, that's a very dynamic thing and you can actually see it because you know the frequency or you can measure the frequency they are queued. And then if you have a, a synchronized RCU call somewhere, I mean, you have to ex uh, execute them because the synchronized caller is waiting for it. So there's no way out, but I think that's way better than trying to do a separate API, which people are going to get wrong anyway. Don't confuse users uh, and kernel programmers. 
we do not need more APIs, please. So you actually propose to get rid of color CU lazy, and instead, instead we should uh, extend color CU uh, to do kind of dynamic flashing based on uh, based on uh, how many callbacks are quit and and so on. This you can you can uh, you can dynamically scale or delay the grace period processing. Yeah, yeah, and that's way more. Uh, elegant because you dynamically adapt to the to the use case. So in the case of of, of a busy server system, you just never reach the, the the threshold to go lazy or delay anything because your backlog becomes horrible long. And on your idle uh, Chromebook, whatever Android use case, you can just go for ten seconds and the world is still turning because you have only 20 callbacks uh, queued. Yeah, I think I think you've yeah. really given us something to think about, so we'll definitely look into that. Um, we have only five more minutes. Uh, yeah, Paul, you want to? Just uh, um, one possibility is for the system to learn what the, you know, to, I think this is what Thomas was saying, but it's, I'm putting it in a different way. Um, what you've got is you're marking them and the source code is lazy, um, but you've got measurements you can take on latencies. And so you may be able to have something that uh, looks at the latencies and figures out which one should be latent, lazy and not at runtime, maybe. I don't know. In other words, if you let one be lazy and something, a latency goes out of bounds, say, sorry, we're not being lazy now. And remember that that one's the one that's not supposed to be lazy. And then, uh, you know, it's going to be a little more complicated, but it's going to be um, off to the side a bit. Okay. And it would build on the mechanism you already have. But it wouldn't require... Uh, a whole bunch of people to come to agreement on exactly which one should be lazy under which circumstances. You could just have it classified on your platform for your use case. Is that okay. what you're getting at, Thomas? Uh, no, not, not really. So, so what I'm what I'm trying to, to say is, um, depending on the system state, on the on the number of queued callbacks. Yeah, that too. You can say, I only have five. I go yeah. ten seconds in, in, idle. In their case, in their case, what they do is if they have even one non-lazy callback. Not right. So, um, so, uh, but but if they have one stupid callback queue, they can just go ten seconds idle, and if they have ten, they can just batch process them. Right. Yeah, I mean, synchronized or you have to process them yeah. no, uh, in order to make progress. And there's some other Makes ones sense. where. So in terms of, uh, I guess I just wanted to quickly go over the point of like using tools and in, in terms of how can we improve our tools in any way to find these issues so that we don't find them much later with truth traces like, uh, so RCU top is one effort in that direction where we want to show the callbacks queued and executed and all that kind of stuff. But uh, maybe perf or something, uh, there's a perf sked, does it make sense to have a perf RCU that does this sort of thing, or another thing I was thinking of, Yokini is a, is a great tool that shows a lot of data, so maybe we can add some stuff to Yogini, or, you know, uh, to show some of these problems. Uh, want to talk about your tools? Uh, oh, but yeah, it's fine. So maybe a uh, kernel shark as well, right? If kernel shark and like show takes uh, disturbing idle or something. Steven, oh, thanks. Yeah, for analyzing, we have uh, trace CMD, we have perf, we have kernel shark, and then yeah, plenty of tools. I, I notice you're using kernel shark point hmm? zero point nine nine. Please upgrade to kernel shark two. It's got a lot more features and it doesn't have that stupid. You notice like everything got crunched down to one side. That's a bug in. Geez, the, oh, that's it. That's that never made it to one point. What? One point or a point? The latest one does. Oh well, it's we're two point something now. So try that. Yes. So yes, it's great. We have a lot more things and for Colonel Shark. 
By the way, Jordan Kardashev is the new maintainer of uh, Colonel Shark. So uh, send it. We have a bug report. If you go to kernel.org or uh, there's a bugzilla.kernel.org, go to tools. There's a trace command Colonel Shark. File your uh, bug reports there, please. Thank you. Uh, visualizing some of the issues. Yes, yes. Uh, we have plugins, lots of plugins. Okay. I'll be talking about that open source summit. Thank you, guys. Thank you.